All right, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be back with you guys today. Welcome back to the show. And today is really an exciting day for me because I have a guest who is a wonderful friend and mentor to me. And it's really very exciting to have Kevin Hall join me today on Monday Morning Mojo. And um, Kevin is a highly sought after consultant, a speaker, a coach. He is an author on the subjects of sales, goal achievement, and living a life of purpose and intention. His international best-selling book, which I am proud to say I have a signed copy of here, his international best-selling book, Aspire, Discovering Your Purpose Through the Power of Words, is one of the highest reader-rated personal development books in the history of Amazon and Barnes & Noble. His most recent work on I Am Statements is poised to act uh, and impact millions of lives all over the world. Kevin has been called America's undisputed master of words. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that. He is regarded as a thought leader on discovering one's purpose and is the founder of the Purpose Project. He is truly a wordsmith and um, he has uh, been a part of some amazing um, accomplishments, one of which is his work on the original slogan for the 2002 Olympic Winter Games, Ignite the Fire Within. He has been and continues to be a coach for top international sales performers, business leaders, entrepreneurs, and Olympic and world champion athletes, and has been fe featured in many publications. And I'm sure he would tell you that his greatest accomplishment is his family. He uh, and his wife, Sherry, are the proud parents of six children and 10 precious grandchildren and counting. He is very passionate also about cycling and fly fishing, learning and growing. And it is really my pleasure to introduce and share a little bit of Kevin with you today. Hi, Kevin. Thank you, Anna. Boy, thanks for that wonderful introduction. I'm just excited <laughs> to be with you today. I'm excited too. Uh, what is, what is, how does it feel when you hear all those things I just shared about you and your accomplishments? Feels like that was then, and what is next? It's, we got There's more. We got to raise that ceiling, right? We got to yeah, we gotta absolutely expand. But I've had a very blessed life for sure. Very grateful. You know, Kevin, I had um, the good fortune to meet you in October of 2018. Wow. It was at a Keller Williams event that was put on by Diana Kokoska called Recharge. And Diana, this event was um, open to a small group of people, uh, relatively speaking, considering the, the size of our company and, and how many people we see at events, this was only open to 200 people. And it was to grow and to stretch us. We had, um, and I've gone, I had gone a few times, um, and it was about creating these incredible experiences and hearing from these amazing speakers and thought leaders. And you were one of those people at this event in San Francisco. And I don't know if you know this, I may have shared this with you once before, um, because over the last several years, we've gone on to spend some time together and I've come to your events and you're one of my coaches and mentors. Um, but you said something from the stage that day and it felt like you were speaking to me only. <laughs> mm. um, but you said that, um, you said, I dare you to make your life unrecognizable. What changes can you make in your life over the next 12 months that would catapult you into so many new levels that everyone around you would take a step back and, and say, your life is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. And I took that as a personal call to action and uh, accomplished a lot of great things in the 12 months that followed. And I just wanted to open with that to say thank you, because I believe in expressing gratitude and and to really open up the conversation around change, because change is not easy for most people. And when I heard that, I love to I love change. I'm wired for that. I, you know, you I, know change. <laughs> I know change is growth. And yet you've worked with thousands of people in your career. And I thought we could talk a little bit about change today uh, as, as one of the things that we'll touch on. Um, 
what motivates you to to really inspire people and and to challenge them as you did because you said i dare you to make your life unrecognizable well one you are just a joy because <laughs> from that year and now we go out has it been five years five yes. years yeah. it was in the fall so it was about five years ago boy what you've done in those five years is incredible and that's a reward in itself to watch someone who inspires you to think big and then do big things i think there's a couple of things one i always refer to thomas edison's quote if we did all of the things we're capable of doing we would literally astound ourselves. And so inside of that is a philosophy that, you know what, we're better than we think we are. And we can do so much more than we think we can. And we do tend to sometimes settle for mediocrity. I mean, now uh, I was just talking to a, a, a world record holder athlete today, and he was talking about how uh, kids, if they don't show up, say a young generation they don't show up for work remember in, in my age myself a little bit Anna if you didn't show up that, that was kind of one and done now you get two or three or four strikes but it's not just showing up it's what you're going to do and how are you going to make this a little bit better so that's that's one key that we are better than we think we are we can do so much more than we think we can and two everything that we want when we have an abundant mindset Mm -hmm. Everything that we want that is significant and meaningful and profound, it's at the edge of our comfort zone. And so we've got to kind of become comfortable with being uncomfortable if we truly want to transform. And, yeah. Uh, you know, you're a you're a testament to that. Oh, thank you. You know, you you mentioned a few key words that I have in my notes and you know, my mission like yours is to inspire other people to push past their limitations and embrace growth, embrace a change so that they can experience transformation. And in order to do that, I think it is important to think abundantly. I think when when we don't trust ourselves, that's one thing that can get in our way of, of achieving greatness. And certainly this world right now that we live in is it, it <laughs> what is this world that we live in it's changing rapidly there's a lot of things that we're all trying to navigate and understand from the economy to world events to uh socioeconomic conversations and you know it it could be easy to fall into that scarcity mindset into a fear based mindset which is the opposite of abundance and you know, I, I would love for you to just share some thoughts around abundance with our, our listeners today. I think that the people who listen and, and follow this podcast are seekers and who, you know, there are people who want more in their life. So what can you, you share with us that would inspire us to reach for more and to think more abundantly? Oh, I'm so excited. I should pay you to let me even just open <laughs> the curtain a little bit on these principles. Let's just talk about four laws or principles. And you rarely, you rarely write or speak and use the word always, unless it's a natural law, like the law of gravity. And mm -hmm. what goes up must come down. And so here are four principles I'd ask you to consider. And then maybe we can talk about that. You are so good to bounce things off of. We can you know, as we share one of these, you know, you know, share your insights as we go through this, Anna. But one is that love will always find a way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, could, we we live in a world where love isn't always the very first thing. And we need to start with love for ourselves. I have a principle that I discovered um, that is Genshai, G-E-N-S-H-A-I, which means you would never treat another person in a manner that would make them feel small, including yourself. And that comes from India. It's in their sacred writ to never treat somebody small. Don't let others treat you small. Don't treat others small. But above all, don't treat yourself small. So when we come from that loving, unconditional love, love will always, always find a way. I think that's what opens up abundance. Scarcity is driven by, you said it, fear. Fear. If, if, if 
if I'm fearful, there's not enough. I've got to get my stuff. And that's the second law. And then maybe we can pause and talk about these two. Knowing you're enough always yes. creates enough. Knowing you're enough always creates enough. If you don't think you're enough, there will never, ever, ever, ever be enough. But when you know you're enough, and you are every person on this planet, eight billion people. I don't know how they know that. Who counts all of that in every tribe and every village in the world, but eight, approximately eight billion people, everyone is an unrepeatable miracle. So love will always find a way and knowing you're enough always creates enough. What, what do you think of those two, Anna? Well, I think that you are right. And I know, you know, and I've shared this before. I, I've struggled in my life as I know so many listeners have and my first marriage was um, very abusive. And I really struggled with that. Am I enough? Because I was told every day that I wasn't good enough in, in, in words or actions. And I think that the two most powerful words in the English language is I or I am. And then what comes right after that is probably the second most powerful, right? And so we have to be willing to say, like you just said to, to us that, you know, we are this unrepeatable miracle that we are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose and that the work that we have in front of us is to just figure that out and to believe in ourselves. To, like, as I said before, I think what gets in people's way is they don't trust themselves and they don't mm. trust that they have gifts and they don't trust that they are truly enough. And yes, there's always opportunity to grow and develop and learn new skills and learn new concepts. But it's just knowing that we were divinely made with these gifts that we need to first open in order to use. And so it's really the path to self-discovery first. And then trusting that what you've learned about yourself says, you know, I, I am enough and I have things that I can give to the world. Wow. If every person watching this um, would just say, I am enough, I am worthy. And some people say, well, that's too big of a, a step or I am level. That's way too big of a step. Then start with, I am worth loving. Mm -hmm. I am worthy of love. I'm worthy of giving and sharing love. I am worthy. And like you said, I trust myself. When you decide to have an abundant mindset and, uh, and, and take the roof off of what you think is possible and raise that, we start to think and act a lot differently. And you need to believe, hey, I'm worthy of achieving this. And if I don't do this, somebody's going to. So why not me? Why not me? And I need to trust. I don't believe, you've heard me say this, Anna, I don't believe that you could have a goal or an intention that aligns with your, I'm a person of faith, your unique God-given gifts that you couldn't achieve. If it, if it's, if it benefits somebody other than yourself, it should benefit you and it should benefit someone else. But if it aligns with what your gifts are, my goodness, you need to trust that I'm I'm sensing this for you to be doing this podcast, for you to be doing the leadership th that you do. When you speak, you have a, I've told you this and I'm not patronizing you. There are anaisms that just <laughs> flow out of you. It's just your thing. It's just who you are. And you put a lot of work in to make that happen, but it's one of your many gifts. Yeah. And, you know, I really hope that that someone listening to this is inspired by by our conversation because we all have a gift, whatever that is, you know, and I think that I knew from a young age, I, I shared this on another podcast just a couple of weeks ago, that even as a young kid, I saw myself, I had this vision of being in front of lots of people. Now at that young, at a young age, I thought it was going to be, I was going to sing, which I can't sing, uh, or I was going to be an actress. Right. And so now I realized that the vision was me teaching was, was me coaching was me, you know, creating platforms like this podcast to share thoughts and share conversations with, you know, great people like you to really just 
my my goal is to get people to think because mm. if if you change the way you think, you can change your world. And you know, you talk about the power of words. Well, words start in your mind first before you speak them out loud, right? So when we talk about creation, that first creation is in our thoughts. And so if we change what we're thinking, we can change how we are behaving and that's going to change our world. That's transformation. And so, you know, you talked about God and God created this world. So everything about the world that we live in is about creation and transformation. Nothing stays the same. Wow. So wow. why should we? <laughs> right. Why And why should we? Our, because we really have a choice. Are we going to move forward or move backwards? You can't really do both at the same time. And as Stephen Covey taught me, live life in crescendo. Crescendo in, in Italian, in Latin, it means growth. And so our greatest contribution, our greatest work, it's ahead of us. It's not behind us. It was really nice to hear those wonderful things that we started. But boy, what is next? What do we get to do next? And uh, I think as we look at these principles of abundance, that, hey, love will always find a way. It, inside of that are some thinking. You said our thoughts. we got to change our thoughts if we want to change what we're manifesting, our results. We don't see the world as it is. And this is some people say, well, this is a crazy world that we live in. And I'd say, well, there's some unique things about our world, but it's a perfect world in my mind. It's the yeah, only it's world. It's a beautiful world, too, with lots of opportunity. World. It depends on what you choose to look at or what you choose to focus on. Yeah, what you focus on expands, what you think about, you bring about. Um, so we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we see ourselves. Think of that for just a minute. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we see ourselves. And the way we treat ourselves reflects in the way that we treat others, which kind of leads me to that third. You ready for the third? Yeah. Six word natural law about abundance. So love will always find a way. Knowing you're enough always creates enough. And Anna, just think of this visual. We. The W, it's almost like hands pointing upwards to an abundant universe, pointing upwards to heaven. It's not closed. The me, an M, is pretty closed. It's downward looking. We is always greater than me. And that is, that opens up the floodgates of abundance. You, we, we hear the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, and I would add to that, and you really want to make a difference and do things that are significant and meaningful and profound, you go together. You want to go fast, go alone. And we all want, there are days I'm just like, I, I can't wait for it, but I just got to do this. And there are times where we got to do our part. But when you coalesce and get like-minded people, you know, in your business, what you're doing here uh, with your podcast and your training, we is always not once in a while, it's always greater than me. So, you know, what's interesting about that, there are, you know, a lot of us who work as part of a team or part of a company. So we can, we can, you know, be inspired by that to say, okay, how can we collaborate more? How can we support each other more? And yet I know that I have, you know, someone listening today who might be a solopreneur and um, who might be working independently in their own business, or they they're maybe in a job where collaboration is not as natural. And something that you um, have said before, and and other thought leaders have shared, basically, you know, it is about seeking out the wisdom of other people and and finding people that you can learn from. And you have talked about you know really being aware of who you spend most of your time with. And so I, I know that you're a teacher and a coach. Who do you spend a lot of time with? Who are the people you're learning from? Because you also have to fill your cup in order to give to other people. So what are some of the resources that you're tapping into so that you can live a more abundant life to be able to give to others? Uh, um, 
the two most impactful mentors in my life living would be John C. Maxwell. And I know you know John and I, I, uh, I get emotional when I think about John and mm -hmm. how affirming and kind and encouraging and edifying he has been of my work. He doesn't need to do that. He, he's got lots on his plate. He is the real deal. And, and uh, I would hope to have just a small fraction. I'm not trying to compare, but of the impact that he has had when my life has run its course. So John is is got to be one of the the, the I, he's the leadership thought leader of our day. I, I don't think I don't I don't think I that's agree. up for discussion. I think he's yeah. if he's not it, he's in that top one, two, three conversation. Stephen Covey who wrote, you kind of held up my book and you didn't see my name at the bottom, but it said Stephen Covey at the top. He worked with me on my book for four years. And, and how did I get him to work with me on it? We knew each other and I share that in the foreword, but I asked him, I asked him if he would help me as I wrote this book. And he has a philosophy, do you go to the top of the learning curve? So Anna, if you've got an entrepreneur you have an entrepreneur who is, you know, a solo entrepreneur, then you want to do something really well, find somebody who's doing what you're doing and has done it better than anybody's ever done it and go yeah. to them. Don't go to the bottom of the learning curve. Um, I was just talking to a, a, a wellness coach, uh, James Lawrence, James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy. Uh, we did a, a master class this morning and he did a hundred straight Ironman triathlons in a hundred straight Incredible. days. And he said, you know, there's a lot of disinformation out there. You got to go to people that have done it. He said, sometimes I get people that say, oh, I'm a, I'm a 19 year old, a 20 year old, not that they don't know something good, but I'm going to give you coaching for longevity, for wellness, for health. And he's like, come on, you, you got to have a little bit, you know, you got to have a little bit of experience to be able to do that. And so, yeah, by the way, Jim Rohn, anything anything by Jim Rohn, um, God rest his soul. Mm. He had a way of taking complex principles and just, right. Just bring them down to its essence. He's the one that said, you're the average of the five of people, the five you spent people. The most time with. Yeah. Jim Rohn was probably the first thought leader coach that I ever connected with. I was at, I was probably 18 and I, it was my first job. It was a sales position. And, um, you know, he, that was one of his, um, powerful lessons for me. Uh, and the other one was, you know, when you help enough, I'm paraphrasing, but when you help enough people get what they want, you always get what you need or want in yeah. return. So, you know, I learned at a, at a young age to move myself out of the way, sort of, and really focus on how can I help you, right? How, who, wh whoever this person is on the other side of the conversation for me, what do they need? How can I help them? And, and I think that comes back to what you said about we is always greater than me, because it is about the the collective good that we can create by focusing on service to others. It is, and learning best practices from others so that we can contribute and serve others, you know, even even better. I we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So when we talk about we, I'd add one other principle kind of layer on top of that. Show me your friends. Show me who you spend your time with yeah. and I'll show you your future. So those that are joining you and experiencing this, they're going to have a brighter future. Um, there is so much out there right now. I mean, there's so much incredible content that we can and and just books, just picking up a book that someone has taken and put their very best into it. I mean, one other one, I, I I love the four agreements, Anna. We even did a coaching session, you and I, on yeah. that, the, the Don Miguel Ruiz, that, I mean, just, just those simple principles, be impeccable with your word. That's about how do you talk to yourself, take care of yourself, right? Don't take anything personally, never assume anything and do your best. Wow, just those four principles. So there's just so much that we can learn. It never ends if we're doing the work. Stephen, at the end of his life, Stephen R. Covey, 
he just didn't write or teach the seven habits. He lived them. Mm -hmm. And he would read or scan books and material from all over the world. And he was a speed reader. So he could he could understand principles from a book in his daily private victory session every day. He was learning something somewhere in the world every day. And you'd say, well, what does he need to learn? I mean, but he did tell his last breath. So, Kevin, on that note, when when you think about learning and growing, I, so we I I just led a leadership uh, meeting today with our company, uh, an all day event, and one of the things that I taught about or talked about was, you know, developing a personal growth plan, and. I believe that growth is intentional. I know you believe that too. It's something that we have to plan for. And if if you were talking to someone who this is really a new concept for them, what what would you share with them in terms of, you know, what might want what they might want to put on their personal growth plan, what direction they might want to go in first? You are so good at questions and you're good at answering those questions as well. I think it's really important, Anna, that we fill our bucket first, mm -hmm. right? Self-care, self-improvement, self-development, personal development, that sacred time that we allot for us. That isn't selfish. It's essential. It's essential. It's, it's you got, you've heard me say, you got to take care of the goose, which I yes. learned from Stephen that lays the golden eggs. If it was your birthday, if it was your special day, and every day should be a special day, you don't know when your next day is going to be. If somebody said, hey, Anna, we're going to go celebrate you. We're going to take you to your favorite restaurant. And you say, oh, I've got so much to do. I'm just going to, I'm going to hunker down in my office and I'll just get this done. And there's a time for that. There's no shortcuts. And they say, well, would you like us to order? You really like that special, you know, macadamia encrusted halibut you want us to bring that dish? no no i don't i don't need anything just just bring me the scraps right and that's what you wouldn't say that I, you would not as hard working as you you i think you'd probably say hey bring me something healthy bring me something that i like that's really nice or you'd go but sometimes we settle like everybody's going to eat and they're just going to take their plate and just slough it off into a to go thing that they're going to slide underneath the door so that you're going to get to it because you're just taking care of everything in the world. You've got to take care of you before you can take care of others. Again, we don't see the world as it is a world full of opportunities. We, we, we won't see that until we see ourselves full of opportunities and we start taking care of ourselves first. That's where an abundant mindset starts is, do you think enough of yourself to take care of yourself. Because if you kill the goose in that fable, the farmer killed the goose because he wanted more golden eggs. And what happened, Anna? There were no more. <laughs> no more eggs and 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 just killed the producer of those eggs. So I think you, you see highly, if you ask John Maxwell or Stephen Covey or Hal Elrod, the, the Miracle Morning, yeah. If, if you ask them, even James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy today, hey, could we get together at this time? A lot of them will say, that's my sacred time for personal development. W what do you mean? That's your, That's what I, if I win the morning, I'm going to win the day. If I win whatever that is for you, your invest formula, making daily investments, are you going to spend time or are you going to invest your time? And you need right. to be spending time, I think daily improving yourself because if you just get one thought from this experience with you and i if someone here a listener gets one thought or one idea their mind will never go back to its original proportion i think that is just amazing it doesn't go back to just one idea and we are changed forever so why wouldn't we want a multitude of ideas that we once you know more you can do more there you go. There's an Annaism. Once you know more, <laughs> you can do more and and you can be more. You, you, yes. you can do and have more because you have become 
more. What's the same, Anna? The same woman or man doesn't walk through the same stream twice because it's a different stream and it's a different person yeah. going through that stream the second time. You know, it's really interesting, um, Kevin, you're not going to be surprised because, you know, you guys are listening to this. This is how Kevin and I have phone calls. This is really like <laughs> eavesdropping on one of our phone calls. It's, it's, um, and we, we touched base just the other day about recording today and we both decided, you know, we weren't going to plan anything and we were just going to allow the conversation to flow. And I did my, my, I did do my due diligence and I wrote a few notes and a few thoughts and questions. And it's so interesting because without you knowing where I was going to go with this conversation, you're hitting on every key point or, or uh, setting me up with the question I plan to ask you um, because we're just in sync with, I think, the message that we want to convey to people, which is like, listen, you only come this way once. So what will you do with this crazy life? Right. And mm -hmm. what are you, what are your, um, you know, what's keeping you up at night and why, what is it that's going throughout your mind? You know, what's, what's that question that's swirling around? What is that pressure on your heart? What is that dream? What is that, vision and what's keeping you from moving closer towards it what you know and i get it 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 may not always be easy right yet what's one thing that you can do what's one person you can talk to what's one question you can ask that just gets you started on that journey of living more abundantly of getting more in alignment with what your purpose is what your gifts are um because we don't have time to waste. We we're we don't know how much time we have. We're not promised anything. No, we're not. We're not. And uh what you just said, if we just plant two or three seeds of action every day, if we answer those questions, if we take a little bit of time to contemplate and think. Uh, Thomas Edison, he didn't say it's about women, Anna. He said it about men, but it probably relates to all mankind, but probably more men than women, there's no limit to which a man will go to avoid thinking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just don't take the time to think and get that bigger picture. But if we can just set aside 15 minutes a day for our little private victory time, that's 1% of your day that'll give you back the other 99%. So then when we get, and this is the fourth and final key for abundance, when an opportunity comes, we'll be able to see it. Abundance always says yes to abundance. Mm -hmm. But you have to be in an abundant mindset. And that principle doesn't mean always oh, say yes to everything. Well, there's a movie with Jim Carrey and he says yes to everything and his whole life just goes out of control. But um, it actually has somebody leading a seminar. It's pretty funny. It's a pretty funny movie. Can't remember the name of that uh, movie, but um, when when we have an abundant mindset, we will be able to see the best of the best opportunities. And when they roll in, they roll in. An opportunity, there's a window of time. That comes from port, as you know, opportunity. And in ancient days, when the port was open because the seas and the winds were just right, you could sell in and do converse. If it was a war, you could conquer but it was only in that window of opportunity. We need to be ready with our personal development, with taking the time to answer some of those key questions so that when that opportunity surfaces, that we can seize the day, the carpet day, and we can say yes to those abundant opportunities. And when we do, there will be bigger and better. And it's just, okay, what's next? What's next? And there's no limit. Really, I mean, yeah. how, how did... How did Stephen Covey, how did John Maxwell get comfortable, Anna, not just training at C-level corporate executives, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, I've been privileged to go in a lot of different companies, but then to train cabinets and heads of yeah. countries and state. That's an abundant mindset. That's a legacy. So that maybe. Maybe even before we wrap up, we talk a little bit about legacy because your abundant mindset will create a scarcity mindset will create a very limited legacy and none really 
uh, much to speak about. So a couple of thoughts, a couple of thoughts just came to mind. Uh, I don't know if you were asking really me asking yes. that question, but I'm going to answer it. Yes, I, I was think, asking you, know, you. I think that, I think number one, when you are in alignment with your purpose, well, and, and so in that example, let's say John Maxwell, right? His purpose is to really, to, to teach, right? He was a, a pastor. Uh, he's a thought leader on leadership. He's a teacher. That when you really step into that greatness and you're in alignment, and, and as we said earlier, you trust your gifts, then you are compelled to want to share that wherever you can. And when you, you think about leadership, leadership does not know title. So whether you are the head of a company or the head of a country, you're a leader and you mm. have the same mm. goal and you have the same fear and you have the same opportunity. Um, and we are all human beings. And I think a true leader is, is really passionate about wanting to serve other people. And I think that the world is craving leaders who we we can follow. We're we're craving leaders who aren't that you don't have to be perfect, but I think you have to be vulnerable and you have to be accessible in a way that helps us to connect with you so that we can feel like you can lead us. And so, you know, I think for John, let's say you grow into uh, the conversations that are happening around you, you grow into the opportunities that come your way. And so whether you start talking to five people or suddenly becomes 500 or 5,000 or 5 million, um, when you really are in alignment with your gift, you can't say no to the, to the universal forces that start pulling you in different directions. You know, like before you know it, you're, you're doing a podcast. <laughs> There you are. There you are. And I'm not looking at my phone. I was looking at something. I thought I had it in here that I sent um, to John. I was because he's not really big on texting. And I, it was well, maybe we do this another time. But it's 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 that leadership charge. Mm -hmm. um, I think of three people who really impacted me on what you just talked about. Um John says that leadership is in, it could be boiled down into one word, uh, influence, nothing right. more, nothing less. Stephen felt like the number one imperative, Stephen Covey, for a leader is to inspire. And so now do my little wordsmith word nerd stuff, spire. People say, well, that means spirit. The earliest origin of that word is breath. And so when we inspire, we breathe life into somebody or their dreams, right? And so um, it only takes one to inspire. It only takes one to believe. And believe means to be love, L-I-E-V-E. -E. In Indo-European, in 10 other languages, it means love. So when I believe in something, I be love to somebody in their dreams or to, my, to myself. So yeah, those are really critical thoughts. And it you said leadership doesn't know a title. I mm -hmm. love how you said that because uh, Simon Sinek's work, he talks about, you know, we need to be really careful of those that are in our charge. So leadership, it's about inspiring others with love and kindness and serving and those that are in our leader. charge. Yes, everybody. It's not, yeah, it's not saying I'm in charge. I get to be in charge. Here's who's in charge. Everybody gets to be a leader in your family, in your own life, in your community. Um, and then it comes down to that influence that we can leave on others. I'll send it to you later. I'll send okay. you the champion's charge. So you've okay. got it. So I'm not looking through my phone to see what I wrote a few yeah. months ago. Yeah. And you know, I, I know that um, we're going to run out of some time here, but I just want to make sure that everyone also understands too, like I said, everyone's a leader and some of us may have, uh, maybe we're running companies, maybe we're running teams, but honestly, the power that one individual has to make an impact on just one other person is limitless. And the impact that you might make on that one person 
whether it's a word of encouragement, whether it's guidance, whether it's mentorship, whether it's direction, that person may go on to do things you might not even know about or get to witness, but it creates this ripple effect that to me is really why we're here, right? Mm. We're here mm. to create connection for a purpose, for, for significance, right? And, we, and I think like, you know, we can talk a lot about success and I think as I'm growing more in, in my career and my leadership as a coach, as a, as a teacher myself, I'm, I'm seeking for significance in what I do as much as I might, you know, look for, for achievement around success, because I think it's about who we become in the process of hitting the goal. Hmm. Maybe that helps us wrap some of this up, Anna, because... <laughs> If we focus on contribution mm -hmm. and not on success, we'll end up achieving more than our wildest dreams. And if you think of it, contribution doesn't really have an end. I don't even know if it has a beginning. It's just something that we do for the greater good. Achievement, success has a beginning and a very clear ending. Oh, I just achieved, I just succeeded at what I said I was going to do. Contribution, it is enduring. And that is Stephen R. Covey, 101, 201, 301. As he taught me on a call one day, Kevin, focus on achievement. That's great. But no, focus on contribution and when you do that like you said there'll be people that you've influenced that you breathe life into their dreams maybe just a kind word just a, a thought an idea a pat on the back a thank you note a text a phone call that i believe in you that's all it takes that's all it takes and that's I why I, that's why i'm doing what i get to do every day um, from that contribution that's totally living life in crescendo that you know what our greatest work it's ahead of us and and, and i would say one last thing too and well maybe second to last thing because you're you get the last thing <laughs> and if you got any last question i do I, you know i do <laughs> i know you do at the end of our life i think we're going to be asked three things of ourselves um, and, and this is a work i'm working on on legacy did you live? Like, did you live fully? And did you live with no regrets? Like you said, we only passed this way once. Did we love? And did we love unconditionally? And did we love ourselves first unconditionally so we could do that with others? Did we learn? What does John say all the time, John Maxwell? Sometimes we win, sometimes we learn. We learn. And are we learning every day? of our life. If we're going to add value to others, we've got to add values to ourselves. And then the final one is, did we light? Did we light the pathway of our brother or sister? He who lights the path of another sees more clearly their own. It is so clear. And when you light that path, you see yours and you gain courage and strength and hope. And that, I just applaud you for what you're doing. We're challenging everyone that's listening today. Make your life totally unrecognizable. Yes. In the coming year. Let's let's go do that. Yes, yes, because we are not a product of our circumstances. We are so I, I get it. Someone listening right now, you might be struggling with whatever. And it might seem really hard right now. And it might seem really even impossible on, on some days. My message of hope to you is that it's not permanent. And you are not a victim of your circumstances. You need to understand that you're a product of your choices. And so you could be just one decision away from a completely new direction or a new path in life. And uh, so, so we want you to know that. So, so Kevin, when we opened the episode, I shared, you know, your bio and all the things that you've done and, and you said something great. You said, yeah, what's next? So I'm going to 
ask you that question as we wrap up. What is next for Kevin Hall? Share with I us wanna, the things you might be working on. I'm working on the seven affirmations, which are those I am statements. And I am committed to have that done and in people's hands in 2024. Earlier, awesome. the better. Earlier, the better. I have some physical, spiritual, mental goals. But, you know, Aspire is is in over a dozen, dozen languages all over the world. It's done very well. It's like the little train that could. It just keeps growing. And it's time to get these written works on affirmations and legacy and abundance and healing to get those done and out to the world. And so this is a good reminder for me today. We've, we've taken some content from two or three written works. And I sent you a little thing on serenity after we talked Friday, it. that just the path um, of a peaceful, tranquil warrior. I mean, so there's, there's lots ahead. I, I had Stephen's daughter join me, Cynthia Haller, uh, Cubby Haller, who who finished his last book. Um, she started it with him before he died, and then she carried it over the finish line, Live Life in Crescendo. And she said, Dad, you really think you got another book in you that could that could mirror the seven habits of highly effective people? And it really, she said, it offended him. He says, oh, you think that's the only work that there is left. You don't think I can make another contribution. So yeah, there's lots, lots more ahead. And with technology, Anna, the, with what we have at our fingertips, we can share our messages and we can impact just exponentially so many more people than just those that will pick up a book and read a book. We can get it's it out to the world. So I'm committed to doing that in 2024 like never before. Well, I can't wait to read it and get my hands on it. And if people want to, you know, just get a little bit more Kevin Hall, where can they find you? Well, you can find me if you if you put in Kevin Hall Power of Words, you'll be able to find me um, on Instagram, Kevin Hall underscore Power of Words on Instagram, Kevin Hall Power of Words on Facebook, uh, Power of Words on YouTube. And you can email me. You can use the old fashioned Kevin at powerboards.com and it'll come right to me. That's what and you'll I'm actually give that answer. Out. <laughs> I will answer that. I will answer that for sure. Kevin, um, thank you. I mean, our time together flew by. We could, and maybe we'll do another episode very soon because we could talk about, I think, a lot of things that I truly believe would have the power to change someone's life. So I'm sure we will schedule another time to chat um, and record that for our podcast listeners. But um, I am proud to call you my mentor and my friend. And I'm very, you know, really grateful to you for taking the time and, and joining me today. Absolute honor, Anna. I, well, let's do it again. I, you just tell me when, where, and I will do it. Thank you again for having me on today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for being here with us. We'll see you soon.